So what is a Bayes net besides a picture? Like what's the semantics? What does it represent? If, we, if we're using this as a knowledge representation, we need to know what it means. We need to have a semantics. Um, we need to have uh, models or possible worlds or things like that. Well, so what are the possible worlds here? Kendall, have a, have a clue? We got some variables. Adam? What? A possible world, it, it involves these things. These are the variables. Yeah, it's actually very similar to propositional logic. It's an assignment of, of truth values to these things. That's a possible world. Like one of, you know, For each of these, is it true or false? And now there's just an associated probability. So a Bayes net is actually a probability distribution over all the, the possible worlds, all the, all the different states of the world. So if you, know, if you know the probability distribution, you can answer any query. If we're wondering what's the probability that John calls if there's a bur like, I'm sorry, the probability that there is a burglary if John is calling, we look at all the worlds where John is calling, add up their probability. Of those worlds, take the ones where the burglary is true, add up their probability, and take the ratio. And that's the probability that if John calls, there's a burglary in progress. Right? Pretty straightforward. If you, if you can compute the probability of every single, of each of the worlds, and you have plenty of time to add them all up, then you can answer any query in a Bayes net. And for a small Bayes net, that kind of exhaustive enumeration of worlds is totally fine. And last year, several people passed the exam by completely enumerating each world, and that's fine with me. Um, we'll talk about some fancy algorithms, but as long as you can compute the answer, I don't care. Feel free to bring a calculator, because uh, there will be numbers. So to know the probability of every single world, is that's, that's, that's the fundamental thing that you need to know if you're going to answer a Bayes net query. Um, so OK, well, what's the probability of a world? Um, well, I already talked about the kinds of queries we can answer. Um, what's the probability of a world, though? OK, so the probability that x1 has this value little x, and x2 has this value little x2, all the way out to xn has this value little xn. Um, what's the probability of that? How do we compute it? <sighs> well, if you just think about the definition of, uh, what are these things called? Joint probabilities. Um, the definition is this. like It's the probability of that xn has that value given that all these other ones have their values, times the probability that, times the probability of, of uh, all those guys having their values. So this is just like the definition of conditional probability um, in the multivariable case. Um, and then this probability is the probability that xn minus 1 has its value given that xn minus 2 all the way through xi have their values. So you can sort of chain this out, this in, huge chain of, I think I even have that as the next item, yeah. This huge chain of conditional probabilities. This is one way that you can compute the, the probability of this particular configuration. It says xn minus 1, uh, comma, dot, 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 comma, x1. Yeah, I, I flipped them around. I'm sorry if that's confusing. I just wanted to emphasize that I'm peeling off. It's essentially the same one group, except one back. Yeah. Yeah, so, so taking together, these are all the variables. I'm peeling each variable off so that I'm left with something smaller. So that you peel this off, and then you multiply by this smaller thing. And then we feel like we're making progress. Like we're setting up a recursion here, where we peel off a variable. Um, 
take the probability of it conditioned on the remaining guys times the joint probability over the remaining guys. Does that make sense? Let me just peel off one variable at a time. We set up this recursion winding down. So eventually we'll end up with probability of x1 and there's nothing more to condition on. So, um, so if we knew all these conditional probabilities, that life would be good, because we could then compute the probability of this joint thing. Um, now, a Bayes net is not a general probability distribution. There's specialness. In a Bayes net, when you've got parents, what the parents mean is that they're the only ones that you need to condition on. Glory, hallelujah. Instead of having to condition on all the other guys, we just condition on the parents of XI. Life just got so much easier. Are you implying that these can have more than two states? Um, so we're just going to be talking about uh, binary variables. So it's just very analogous to propositional logic. But in general, these could be any kind of variable. Yeah, they could be continuous even. And then the CPTs here would be like in a very different form than a table. <laughs> um, but people write down distributions like that. Like, you know, if you look at the distribution of income as a function of, um, I don't know, education level or something, you know, that's some crazy distribution. People might approximate it in certain ways with histograms or whatever, but semantically, it's just a distribution. Yeah. Um, OK, so we did all this. Um, now, why is this such a huge, amazing deal that we like spend three lectures on it? Um, well, uh, it's great to handle uncertainty. The cool thing about Bayes nets, the thing that makes them so powerful, is that in general, to specify a distribution over n variables, they're going to be uh, two to the n worlds. And if you write down the probability for each of them, then you have to have a table with two to the n rows, which is really annoying. Um, so I guess this is a b binary variable. So if we, have, we have a binary variable, so this would be two to the n. But if you have a Bayes net where variables only depend on their parents, then if each variable only has p parents, then for each of the n variables, the CPT has two to the p rows. All right, so here, back in our example, this alarm had two parents. Um, so there are four configurations of the, parent, of, the, of, the, of the parents. So you had to have four rows, two to the two rows. So here, if you look. Um, We've got, uh, what is this, five variables. So ordinarily, you'd have to have uh, 2 to the fifth is uh, 32 uh, probabilities. But instead, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So a Bayes net is actually a compact way of specifying a joint probability distribution by exploiting independence. Uh, that, that this only depends on these. It doesn't depend on other random crap. Um, so it's really nice. You know, to, to specify, uh, to talk about Mary calls, I don't need to think about earthquakes if it only depends immediately on alarm. And then we can use inference to deal with the indirect effect that, well, if Mary calls, that actually is giving me some indication about whether or not there's an earthquake. It's changing my belief about earthquakeness. Not much, but a little bit. Uh, 